Hi, I'm Dr. Kit Weathers, and it's time for the Root Tip of the Week. But before we get started, let's reach into the top hat for the Magic Illusion of the Week. With this week's magic trick, I'll show you how you can make very small items appear suddenly and then disappear just as quickly. It's all done with the magic of, well, I'll show you in just a few To minutes. learn the secret to this and other magic tricks in this series, go to endorootcamp.com. Well, I certainly hope you enjoyed this week's magic trick. Right now, root tip of the week. Two classes of uh, analgesics, peripheral and central. Good news is you only need about five drugs in all of the categories to make this work. We'll run through this rather quickly. If it's a um, peripheral acting analgesic like aspirin or acetaminophen or some, one of the NSAIDs or COX-2 inhibitors, uh, those are all good drugs. Centrally acting would include codeine, oxycodone, hydrocodone, oxycontin, or morphine. By the way, if you're having to prescribe morphine, you really need to come back and take this course again because you're doing something wrong. I don't even do those. And if a patient comes in asking for drugs by name, I, I, that d lauded thing really makes, uh, it's the only thing that will work for me, be very suspicious because people are very good at getting it out of you. Aspirin is a wonderful analgesic, but it has a real problem. If anybody has any bleeding tendencies, it destroys the ability of blood to clot and the platelet to, act, to come together for the entire life of the platelet. But aspirin by itself will stop pain quite effectively. But it's also, from a psychological point of view, people don't trust it because they've heard the joke, take two aspirin and call me in the morning. So they won't even do it. So if you give them aspirin, you know, call it something else, put it in a capsule or something, then they're more likely to have it work. Cetaminophen, Tylenol, pretty good analgesic. It does not have the antiplatelet effect, which is good, and it's often used in combination with central acting agents to get a synergistic activity. Two Tylenols every four to six hours, extra three Tylenol every six hours, good combinations. The NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, excellent analgesic and anti-inflammatory effects. They inhibit the cytooxygenases. There are two types of these, COX-1 and COX-2. The COX-1 tends to have GI uh, problems with it. The COX-2 does not. The only problem with COX-2 is that you can't keep them on the market. Basically, as soon as you get a good one on the market, they take it away from us. COX-1 would be Motrin. We've all used Advil, Ibuprofen, Naproxen. Those are all COX-1s. COX-2, uh, which do not uh, have the gastrointestinal toxicity and the antiplatelet effect, some good examples of those would be Celebrex. One of my favorites uh, was Bextra, and it came on the market and was almost immediately removed from the market. Some of these were taken off the market erroneously because they did some studies where they made the patient who took this particular drug in the testing to stop taking the aspirin that they were taking every day to avoid strokes. Just taking them off the aspirin increased the number of strokes, and they attributed that to the Bextra. So it was not a fair test, but it's gone. I injured my back in a balloon accident, and I was taking 40 milligrams of Bextra, and it was perfect. I couldn't even stand up to teach, and this thing was good. I had some one day in the hospital outpatient surgery, basically, where they went in, trimmed off a little piece of the disc. Pain went away, but this stuff worked like a charm, and I was on the street trying to buy it when they took it off the market. Great stuff. Codeine, we've been using that uh, ever since dental school, most of us. Tylenol number three, 30 milligrams of codeine, one to two hours, or one or two of them every four to six hours, PR in pain. That works, but a lot of people have GI problems with codeine. Makes their stomach upset. Oxycodone, uh, Tylenol number three, you can mix with the oxycodone in there, works very well. But here, basically, hydrocodone is another possibility. Vicodin, or my personal favorite, Vicodin ES, 7.5 milligrams of hydrocodone in that particular prescription works very, very well. 
Other preparations include Lorset, Lortab. Morphine derivatives, them are all dilated. I wouldn't use those. If, if the patient's having that much of a problem, I'd get, get them to somebody else, really. It's not a good idea. So here's your strategy. If it's mild pain, Tylenol and Advil work very nicely. Motrin or Aleve every four to six hours, PRN pain works well. If it's a moderate pain, use a COX-2 inhibitor like Celebrex, 400 milligrams QD. More significant pain, Vicodin, Vicodin ES. Uh, Percocet works. And for very severe pain, I would recommend the Vicodin HP. And I wouldn't, personally, I wouldn't mess with the Dilaudid morphine and those sort of things. But that's basically it. This is all in there in detail and all the rationale for why we do it in uh, Section 8. So you can use two Motrin and two Tylenol and get credit for two Vicodin. Well, that's it for another Root Tip of the Week. I'm Dr. Kit Weathers inviting you to register at endorootcamp.com for free videos and special reports you can't get anywhere else. Meanwhile, I will see you at our next Endo Root Camp.